So with the name itself, uh, we understand that we are talking about something which is more um, about a surface of anything, right? So surface has some terms that you have to understand. The first term is adsorption. So uh, adsorption is absolutely different from absorption. So adsorption is something um, which is a surface phenomena. See, what happens is basically in the absorption, this is so much different because you know, when you have a sponge and you dip in water, the sponge occupies, the water molecules will occupy every space of the sponge, whereas adsorption is surface phenomena. It's like when you write on board with a chart. So it is just the surface phenomena. This is a sponge. So this is actually a bulk means overall everything is involved. Here it's specifically surface. This is a branch that deals with the nature and the phenomenon. that occurs on So as I said, we uh, specifically talk about the nature of the surfaces and the phenomena that occur on the surfaces of solids and liquids. That is the that is known as branch uh, like surface chemistry. So you don't. Have, is there anyone who's still copying? I can keep it like this. So the molecular forces, whichever are present at the surface of the solids at surface of solids. They are not balanced. They are unbalanced. To satisfy this unsaturation, the, their surface gets attracted to molecules or they like they start attracting gas molecules or liquid molecules or solution droplets, anything which are nearby. So attachment of molecules to a surface is called adsorption. Okay, so why is this adsorption happening first of all? Because there is molecular forces at surface of the solids which are unbalanced. As this unbalanced, they want to balance whatever spaces are there. They're all occupied by gas molecules, everything around. Okay, so, um, so for that, there is a surface phenomena that is, that is occurring. What is the attachment of molecules? Attachment of molecules to a surface is called adsorption. And two other things that you have to know is substance that substance that adsorbs on the surface that is called adsorbate. And, and the second moment. And the 
and the substance to which it attaches is called adsorbent for example you know if you have a charcoal co2 is adsorbed on it this is co2 adsorbed on it you say that co2 is the adsorbent and charcoal is the adsorbent this is the example let me know if you done copy Can I clear the screen? One second. Sure. Okay. I'm clearing it. Okay, so as I said, adsorption is a surface phenomena. Okay, adsorption is a surface phenomena, and the concentration of the adsorbed. the concentration of the adsorbent is high on the surface of the adsorbent okay here in adsorption the concentration of adsorbent is high on high on the surface of adsorbent but if you consider the absorption the concentration is uniform uniform example water vapor is absorbed by cacl2 also adsorption plus absorption together are referred to as sorption reverse of sorption is desorption at equilibrium rate of adsorption and desorption are seen
So I'm clearing it. Heat of adsorption. Heat of adsorption. So during adsorption, there, there is some attraction or attractive forces that are developed between the adsorbent and the adsorbent. Because of that, there is definitely a release in energy. Okay. So I want you to know that adsorption is generally exothermic. So what do you mean by heat of absorption? This is nothing but amount of heat that is released when one mole of the adsorbate adsorbs on the substrate is known as substrate is nothing but the adsorbent only for to avoid confusion. That is only called heat of adsorption. So this is the definition of heat of adsorption. Somet sometimes it is also enthalpy of adsorption. Next is extent of adsorption. So extent of adsorption is theta. It is the number of adsorption sites occupied. By number of adsorption sites available. Or it is also the ratio of mass of adsorbate to the mass of adsorbent. We have some characteristics of adsorption that have to be written. Once we are done with that, the types of adsorption we'll talk about. Okay, I'm clearing it. Anyone can stop me anytime. I can go back. So, characteristics of adsorption. Firstly, it is a Obviously, it is a surface phenomena. So, it is a surface phenomenon due to selective holding of gas or liquid molecules by surface of the solid. causing higher concentration of gas or liquid at the interface 
than in the bulb. Second, it is a spontaneous process. Third, it is an exothermic process. Adsorption is accompanied by decrease in enthalpy. Decrease in entropy. Decrease in free energy. All these you might have learned in thermodynamics. That is delta H has to be negative. Delta S has to be negative. Delta G has to be negative. The last point. Larger surface area. Greater will be absorption. Larger the surface area, greater is the adsorption. These are the five important points. If they ask you in a theoretical exam also, these are the characteristics of adsorption. Done. Very good. Very good. I'm clearing it. Next we have occlusion. What is this? This is adsorption of H2 gas on surface of metals like if you remember we did in hydrocarbons like in addition reaction, this is called occlusion. It is just, what is what do you mean by it? exactly? It is nothing but, it is used for adsorption of gases, any gas on a metal surface. That's occlusion, a small term. So types of adsorption, first, physical, physical adsorption, physical adsorption is also called as van der Waals adsorption. So what happens here is this type of adsorption involves weak forces, physical in nature, with small heat of adsorption. Example, just adsorption of hydrogen or oxygen on charcoal. 
we have chemi sorption they also say chemical adsorption here what happens you know the force of attraction between the absorb the ad adsorbate and the adsorbent is of same strength as chemical bonds so you also call it as chemi sorption as i said and it may involve covalent or ionic bonds so what's happening here just in the above is only physically something is there and physically just the uh, h2 is on it and there's no reaction as such or anything there's a very weak the adsorption also is quite weak so because of that there's a very small heat of adsorption released because the reactions are very small between the adsorbent and adsorbate the exothermic reaction also the heat emitted is quite less hydrogen gas example is hydrogen gas is chemi sorbed on nickel that means what happens first is hydrogen is first adsorbed by van der waals forces that means first of all it's coming and just falling on it which is the physics option and then dissociates take neck then hydrogen atoms are chemi sorbed on the nickel so first of all when you have nickel next the hydrogen is dissociating and there is a hydrogen plus so of fin adsorption involves combination of two types combination of two types of adsorption so fizzy sorption chemi sorption
this is weak van der Waals forces. Strong covalent or ionic bonds, mostly covalent bonds. Low heat of adsorption. High heat of adsorption. This is not specific. This is not specific. That means all gases can be preserved. This is highly specific. Extent of absorption decreases with temperature increase. Here the extent, write down, it increases initially extent of absorption and then decreases. So I'm clearing it. Can I? Is there anyone who is copying? No, ma'am, you can go on. What are the factors influencing the adsorption? First, obviously the nature of adsorbent so actually the adsorption only is a very huge topic. I mean it's too much in detail has to be learned. So we have large surface area. I already said that large surface area of the adsorbent favors greater adsorption. So rough surfaces fine powder or porous solids show greater extent of adsorption. That means finely divided metals. Nickel platinum Rough surfaces, 
charcoal, silica gel. So find all these are good absorbents, these and these, because they provide larger surface area. That is the first one. Second, nature of obviously adsorbing so easily liquid fireable gases they get adsorbed readily. NH3 adsorbs on the adsorbent to a greater extent. Than the oxygen. Big why? Intermolecular attractions, forces, maybe. intermolecular forces in ammonia gas is greater and then easily be attracted by by the adsorbent. So what I can write is one gram of activated charcoal adsorbs 380 ml of SO2, 16 ml of CH4, 4.5 ml of H2 by the temperature is minus 83. The temperature is 157 degrees Celsius. This is minus 83. This is minus 20 degrees Celsius. Easily liquefiable. That's critical temperature that I wrote. TC there is critical temperature. I hope you know. Critical. C for critical, T is temperature. I'm clearing it. Yes, as we're done, the third and the fourth factors we have that influence. Third, is temperature. We know it is an exothermic process. Okay. It is an exothermic process, the adsorption. Okay. It can be 
spontaneous but only at low temperatures okay that is delta g is equals to delta h minus t delta s with increase in temperature the extent of physical adsorption decreases but in kemi sorption increase in extent of adsorption is observed initially so we can also say kemi sorption increases with temperature also rise in temperature may cause phase sorption converting to kemi sorption So what happens here, ma? As the adsorbate molecules needs to overcome the energy barrier to get adsorbed. Increase in energy provides. the necessary energy of activation for formation of chemical bonds between adsorbent and adsorber it's very clear see basically you know activation energy is the energy minimum energy required for the chemical uh, reactants to convert to product so the adsorbate molecules obviously need to overcome the energy barrier if at all we want the physics option to convert into chemi sorption Can I clear? One minute. Yeah.
I'm clearing it. Next, we have pressure as the fourth factor. So, at constant temperature, at constant temperature, the extent of adsorption increases with increase in pressure. Till saturation is reached. That is, you know extent of adsorption, I already gave in the first slide as a theta and the formula. This is going to increase with pressure. As adsorption is a reversible process, adsorption which is reversible is actually fizzy. Fizzy sorption in brackets and like. Adsorption is reversible, so it is absorption. It is accompanied by decrease of pressure. In case of adsorbates in solution, extent of adsorption increases with concentration of solution. Can I clear? Okay, next we have a very important the relation X by M is nothing but the extent of adsorption. Where X is M is the mass of adsorbent.
So if I say x, uh, that is this x by m is equals to f t t. That is for solid or gas is called adsorption isotherm. So how do you get this isotherms? Such isotherms are obtained. When adsorbate, when adsorbate forms a unimolecular layer on the surface of the adsorbent. As the it's actually given as adsorption as it's related to pressure. As x by m is equals to the proportionality constant 1 by m. So I have a pressure and x by m. The slope x by m is equals to kp 1 by m. k n both are constants. Okay, so at low pressure, x by m is equals to kp1 by n and n is less than 1. I have to continue writing this. I am mm. clearing the above part. So, at high pressure, beyond saturation, X by M is independent of P. So x by m is proportional to p to the power 0. At intermediate pressure, x by m is proportional to p to the power 1 by n. Here n is greater than 1. So log x by m is equals to log k plus 1 by n log b. k is constant. This is only called the Friedrich's That's all. That's all about the size uh, isotherm at least. In the uh, next two slides, we can complete completely adsorption. Next, we have to learn about catalysis. I can draw. Let me know once you're done.
I'm clearing it. So we already discussed that porous and finely divided solid substances generally they adsorb um, more, no? more, so, more surface absorption is going to happen here. So these solid sub substances, they also absorb dissolved substances from the solutions. Or uh, they absorb, absorb the dissolved substances. Like al activated charcoal can absorb the dyes. And if you have a solution of acetic acid, and if you have charcoal present in it, a part of acid is also removed by the adsorption. That means it, is, it has absorbed. So concentration of solution is going to decrease. So what, hap what happens here? You already know some adsorb some adsorbents specifically adsorb only some solutes more effectively than others. Okay, and also we know so if the surface area increases, the adsorption also increases. We also know chemisorption increases with temperature. So what can we write? Uh, is the same Friedlich isotherm equation was written using concentration in another way. That is, the x by m is equals to k c power 1 by m. What is x here? It is mass of the solute adsorbed. m is the mass of adsorbent. c is the equilibrium concentration. of solution. So, equation is log x by m is equals to log k plus 1 by n log c. Last is the applications of adsorption, which is the last of adsorption. What is the application? Gas marks, you know, gas masks that we use in different chemical um, industries. They contain activated charcoal. As adsorbent to remove poisonous and toxic gases and purify the air. Second, chromatographic, chromatographic analysis, analysis is based on selective adsorption. Cleaning action of soap is adsorption. Ion exchange resins. They soften hard water by selective adsorption. Heterogeneous catalysis that you will learn later is based on adsorption. Okay, very normal industrial. Waste and toxic chemicals are removed by treating water with an adsorbent. That's all.
of a, about the adsorption we are done. As I said, we are going to start with catalysis in the next class. That's on Thursday. If everyone is done copying, you can leave the class. Those who are copying can still stay back and copy. Very good, Ajay. Those who are done? Okay. I'm clearing the screen. Can I end the session? Is there anyone who's still copying? Finished, ma'am. Yeah, thank you all. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you.